So that should be there, right? Yes, yes. And I think I already hit the recording. Just to check, can you see the recording is on? Yes, it's on. Okay. Okay, so we'll continue from last time. Um, but let me briefly describe what we talked about last time. We talked about DiVincenzo's criteria. Uh, there are five of them talk about coherence and the universal gay measurement, preparation, etc. And we talk about a few physical systems that can be used to implement quantum information processing. Uh, we started with photons. We talk about uh, polarizations, time beam, uh, path encoding, and then about continuous variable. This is in some sense using lasers, uh, but not exactly in the coherent state, but in some cat state that are in a superposition of some coherent state and it, it's uh, anti-partner. Then we talk about spins, uh, which include electron spins, nuclear spin, we talk about MV, uh, center and diamond. Uh, after that, we talk about trap ions and atoms. And there I introduced the hyperfine states. So any question on any of these subjects? So it's useful to know some of the physics, how the system uh, were built from. And um, today we're going to discuss the one that is one of the most popular uh, qubit system, superconducting qubit. And then we'll talk about another one, which is a promising one, but uh, it's not yet uh, used in practice, namely the topological qubit. And after that, uh, we'll uh, finish the week three material, move on to week four. We're going to go into the detail of quantum states. And I will uh, describe to you how to use Qiskit. Uh, we already talked about some of the Jupyter notebook, but I'm going through some of the Qiskit and how you can run it, uh, the programs. Okay. So uh, today's topic, the first one is the superconducting qubit. Uh, the reason it's called superconducting qubit is because uh, it consists of superconducting material and mostly you use um, so-called Josephson junction and there are three, at least three in the beginning of the development and then it gradually merged into the fourth one. The first three are phase, flux and charge qubits and, and you'll see the transmon are just uh, in some special regime of, of, of the charge qubit. So, yeah, so as I said, the crucial ingredient is the so-called Josephson junction. It is a, a piece of superconductor connecting to another one. This one may be um, oxide, so it does not conduct. But in the end, you have two electrons form a so-called Cooper pair and can tunnel back and forth. And depending on the phase, this is superconducting phase. It's something that uh, sits in the wave function. If the left-hand side and right-hand side have different phases, uh, a current will start to flow. So this is the current. So the current will flow. And the way it flows is it's proportional to 
the sign of the phase difference. And so this is what was discovered by Josephson. And this is um, the reason he was awarded the Nobel Prize. And if you apply voltage, you can apply voltage across the junction. Then the phase would start to wind, would start to increase. And how it increases is, is governed by the, the voltage across the two junction, uh, across the junction. And so this is the formula. So the voltage in some sense is proportional to some constant. This is called flux quantum over two pi and the rate of change in the phase difference. In some sense, this is saying that the phase difference will start to evolve and the ray is proportional to the voltage across. So these are two fundamental relations that Josephson found. So we just take uh, them as granted that these are the starting point. And if we look at the usual definition of inductance is that the, the voltage through some induct, inductor voltage is proportional to the rate change in the current. So I is current and multiplied by this inductance constant. Okay, so that's the usual uh, relation of voltage, inductance, and the current you learn in your undergraduate uh, electronics. But if you try to relate this using the Josephson relation, so the voltage is some inductance constant, the rate of change of current, you basically use this formula and you take the derivative with respect to time, so it brings uh, sine into cosine, and then the delta, the rate, d delta dt is using the second relation in in the box, and you find that this is this is the what you get. The voltage is some constants times the phase difference times the voltage and times another constant two pi over phi zero. You can relate this back. So this, this is a, so this is the constant in from the, the inductance relation. You can find that this in fact is related to the uh, one over square root of current minus the the current constant minus the actual current. So in the usual inductance, this usually does not depend on anything else on current. For example, it does not even depend on the current, but here has a current dependence. So this make it um, a nonlinear inductance. And then you can also ask uh, the energy store in the junction. It's basically voltage acting on across this and ties the current. You integrate over time because this is a power and that integrate over time, you give you energy. And then you find that this is proportional to the cosine of the phase difference. Okay, so the detailed derivation is not that important. We're going to take this as a starting point. For energy discussion.
Okay. Uh, any questions so far? Okay, so let me go to the next page. So the so-called transmon qubit is the following design. As you can see here, uh, there are just as a junction, they're actually hiding, hiding here, okay? So this is the circuit diagram on the left. On the right is the actual, okay, it's a design of the, the material. Okay, they basically uh, were able to design such a structure and this is mapped uh, schematically to, to the circuit diagram on the left. Then you can ask about the energy Essentially, I'm not going to through the derivation. You can ask about the energy dependence. So the Hamiltonian basically is the matrix that describes the energy. And if you take into account all the capacitance, it gives rise to the EC charging energy. And EJ, as we've seen here, this is uh, this coefficient here is Josephson energy. EJ. And let me tell you uh, other parameter here. This N hat is an operator which describes the number of Cooper pair. So as I told you that the Cooper pair can only tunnel, so the electron can only tunnel in the form of Cooper pair. So this is uh, the number of Cooper pair on the island, for example, in this dark blue piece. The number of Cooper pair is an observable there. And NG is just some offset. So NG is the offset, this is a number. Uh, delta is the phase between the two superconductor across the two. So the, the dark blue one and the light blue one, so there's a phase difference. EC, as I said earlier, it's charging energy. EJ is the Josephson energy. Okay, so why do I want to show you this? Because this show you the fundamental equation that governs the transmog qubit. And then if you treat this as a matrix, so this is a matrix, so N, is an operator, delta is an operator. They don't commute. They're like uh, position and momentum. So if you saw this matrix, you find that there are many lines or level describing the energy. So for example, uh, you can take different ratio. So for example, EC, uh, EJ over EC roughly one, and you start to increase and increase more and more. So as you can see, when EJ is big, so when EJ is big, the cosine turn dominant, okay? And that give you a few lines. But when you have EC is dominant, they give you they give you a parabola. So because of this term. So they give parabola. And in between you see 
from this case to this case. And these lines, the black, red, and blue, they are energy levels. So for example, if you fix uh, offset, charge offset, this is usually controlled by a gate. If you say you fix one, then there are three points, right? So these three representing the lowest state, the so-called ground state, first excited state, and second excited state. These are used uh, in the qubit zero and one are the lowest two levels used as qubit. And the third one will be used some auxiliary state that may be useful for control, but the higher level also there. So they are intrinsically there. And you see that these energy level are not quite the same. The difference from zero and one and two, the second one, they are not identical. So they are not equal level spacing. In contrast, uh, the harmonic oscillator we saw maybe earlier or uh, when we saw these uh, later diagram, these have the same energy. So if you have a uh, state two, you have two photons, that's twice the single photon energy. But for these transform levels, the spacing are not the same. So this is useful because when you shine a laser that's resonant to between zero and one, they only excite the transition between the two. They will not have, for example, maybe the energy is larger. So that cannot excite two. It's too far off resonance. So I guess what you uh, need to take home with um, is the Hamiltonian that give rise to energy levels. And the lowest two are used as the qubit. So anything so far? Any question? Okay. Uh, so I will not talk about in detail how you control these superconducting qubit. In fact, they are controlled by uh, applying uh, electric pulse. And these are, can be described uh, in terms of some pulse. And uh, in the IBM case, they develop some software. Uh, they call this Kitsit pulse. You can actually, you can actually design your pulse and then send it to qubit and for them to respond. So the qubit will respond. So for example, maybe you start with zero and you, you apply the pulse so that it bring up to one. And so these are described in more detail in these two papers, but uh, this these will be advanced topics, or it could be the project that you, you guys can go into detail later in the semester. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, so before I talk about Topological qubit, I need to talk ab about fermion bosons just to begin with. So um, you probably have learned fermion boson in your modern physics, but if you have not, it's okay. So I'm going to describe them as follows. So you know fermion, they don't like each other. They do not occupy the same state because their wave function change size if you exchange coordinate of two particles. So as you can see here, if you exchange that, there's additional minus size. okay? And this basically can be described by the so-called fermion, fermionic annihilation operator and creation operator, okay? They satisfy these so-called anti-commutation so this symbol representing that 
C I times C J plus C J times C I. They this is called anti commutator. They add up to zero. But when one of them is a creation, the other is annihilation operator. The anti commutator give rise to delta i j, meaning that if i equal to j, c i c i dagger plus c i dagger c i equal to one, so identity. But if i is not the same, they simply anti commute. So anti-commute is the reason that there's a minus sign. Okay. On the other hand, bosons, for example, photons or the rubidium 87 atom that we talked about last time, they are bosons, they like to occupy the same state and their wave function is the same on the particle exchange. So you exchange the two coordinate of particles. There is just a plus sign, okay? And this is encoded in the, this is commutator. So bi times bj minus the reverse order, in this case is zero, meaning that they can you can exchange these two operators. And unless they are the same operator, but one is creation, the other is annihilation. Okay. So I'm sure you have learned fermions and boson, but uh the operator are convenient way to describe these so-called statistics. So these are the statistics. Okay. And those qubit that use the uh, topological effect, many of them are called anions. So anion, these are exotic particle. When you exchange the wave function, So X I, maybe X J, X I. There is some arbitrary phase. So it's not, it's no longer for me, so I erase that. Maybe A as anion. And in fact, it can be more complicated, not just a phase, but maybe a matrix which involving uh, many component of the wave function. Okay, so this is really hand waving uh, description of anions. But let me give a uh, slightly more detail exchange. You can see there are two particle A and B. When you exchange twice, it goes back to the cell. Uh, this this uh, is also equivalent to you move this particle and loop around, right? So if you do this and you loop around or do it to exchange. So, okay, this P here uh, representing an exchange. So suppose I exchange and give right to some phase and we want to find what phase is. And if we do twice, right? We do the exchange twice. We should give rise to the same wave function, right? So that's represented here. So this means that the face square to plus one. So the only two possibility they can have is plus one or minus one and plus one representing boson minus one 
is the fermion, okay? And this is assuming that we can continuously, for example, a loop in the three dimension, you can, doesn't matter whether there's a hole or something particle there, you can always continuously uh, deform it into smaller loop and then shrink to nothing. But in two dimension, if there is a particle here, loop this way and that way, they are actually different. Suppose imagine there's a hole or maybe some flux. Uh, you cannot continuously shrink this because there's no third dimension you can you can uh, avoid this this hole or particle there. So this means that this does not hold, strictly speaking, it does not hold in 2D. So meaning 2D can have exotic statistics. Okay, so there's no constraint. So that's why you have annual that can emerge. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to give you exercise on bosons and fermions. So in terms of qubit, uh, they, they need to use a certain material in order to realize these anions. And if I have anions, I can move them around and the braiding or the group that uh, governs the braiding give rise to quantum states. So I'm going to talk more about that, but let me introduce a physical system. So the most famous or popular one is the so-called fractional quantum hole system. So this is a, a, a solid state device where you take a, it's usually a two dimensional semiconductor. What you do is you apply a, a magnetic field perpendicular to the surface. And you also apply current. And as you do that, you measure the voltage difference. that would give you the so-called whole resistance. So it's the voltage. In this direction, divided by the current. And when you do the, uh, another way you could also is you look at the, the usual conductance, which is the voltage applied across over so voltage across applied here over the current and when you plot the what experimentalists found as a function of the field strength you see that the the whole conductance is roughly a straight line except there are some regions that are steps and when it becomes it become level, the resistance would drop to zero. Okay, so this means that the transport through the through this piece of material is dissipationless. So it does not have resistance. And what emerge is that as some, some value, if I can make this bigger, you see that there are some uh, rational number here, for example, one third here, it actually representing that this corresponding to a feeding 
of electrons in the orbital that is only one third feeding. And uh, this plateau representing the so-called fractional quantum hall, fractional in this sense, that a fraction of electron occupying the levels is, on, is not complete, but only some fraction. And what happens the, there is you have anions emerge from these fractional whole values. And there, there's a beautiful math, mathematic behind that. I won't be able to tell you about that, but there are anions. So you can imagine there are anions. Um, the problem of using this system is very difficult to control where the anion is and how you move them around. So this is hard to move anions. Other systems that uh, have anions are from frustrated magnetic system. So for example, uh, there's some material, it's called Herbert Mithai. Uh, they look, they, the geometry that they leave looks like a Kagome lattice it's here. And the interaction they have is the so-called Heisenberg spin interaction. So these are the SI.SJ interaction. And it's believed that the lowest uh, state of the system is in the so-called quantum spin liquid, a very exotic uh, state and the excitation are anions. You, co you could also cons by hand construct some toy model. So for example, here is the so-called Kitai of Toriko. I just want to write, uh, just for you to see, uh, they write the Hamiltonian. So these are, for example, Sigma X, product Sigma X, product Sigma X. For those in the cross there, and for those in the pocket, it's the sigma z, sigma z interaction. Uh, the spin leaves on the ed edges in this case. But these are examples that you could have anions. Uh, other more uh, physical systems are also including two dimensional superconductor where you apply magnetic field so there will be flux through this. And in terms of the system, uh, the superconducting uh, order parameter dropped to zero. So there are vortices created. And in the core of the, vo the vortex, there is some strange state, it's called Merana state. So if you have an electron, it occupied that state, it will be the so-called Merana fermion. Okay, but uh, the upshot of that is, if you allow to move the vortices around, like we exchange the two vortices, there is some effect on these two anions. So, you know, one is going to exchange to two, that's for sure, and two going to be exchanged to one, but there is additional phase that, it, that appear. So these can be used for quantum gate. Okay. Any questions so far on the physical system? Okay, so 
the mathematics behind why anions are useful is the so-called break group. So it's very easy to describe. So for example, I call Ti is uh, representing the braiding of the I strands and I plus one strand. So I'm writing this over the other one as the Ti. Its inverse would be would be this going on top and that's going under, okay? And you can see that if I have many of these, I can sort of break things around. Maybe there's a third one, I could do it more, etc. So it turns out there is some constraint on the break group. So if you break, Ti is between I and I plus one, then you break the I plus one and I plus two, and then I and I plus one like this. It's actually equivalent to the Ti plus one, Ti and Ti plus one. So you can visually see that uh, there's a constraint, but you can visually see that these are identical braiding. And this is the only constraint. So the idea of quantum gate is to use the braiding of anion so that the braid group uh, forms some non-trivial gate. Uh, if we can find one that form universal gate, then we can implement universal quantum computing. So there's, there have been a lot of studies and it is known that a specific type of anion called Fibonacci anion, they are really useful, but physically we don't know how to uh, realize them. The Ising anion that I described related to the Mirana fermion, uh, they are not universal, meaning there are some gates, some gates cannot be realize. Okay, that's why uh, they are not so useful, but there are other ways to uh, introduce other gates. But that may also break the topological protection. Okay. Questions? So if there's no question, I want to introduce the mathematics of the Mirana fermion. These are also called zero mode. So recall the fermion, we have C, I, C, J, the anti commute So this means that if I take the operator, right, C, I, C, J, if I set J equal to I, I would have this equal to zero, that means if I take any fermionic operator, I square that, uh, I get zero, okay? Uh, the Marana fermion, they are sort of real par and imaginary par of an ordinary fermion, okay? So I take C and take its emission conjugate. It's twice the real part. And this is twice the uh, imaginary part. And you can check, for example, let me check RB square. Okay, let me just check here. So I square that. I should get C square, CC and CC dagger. C dagger C and C dagger square, right? This is zero, that is zero, and this add up to one. So I have these Mariana fermion, they square to identity. And they are, since they are sort of emission and the real power and measure power, they're their homogeneous conjugate is the same. So you can see from here, right? RB dagger 
is to take C dagger and then take C that's the same as gamma, gamma B and gamma A dagger. You take this dagger, the minus sign, and this become non dagger and this become minus sign and the cell. Okay. So they are like half of a fermion. So therefore, if you have, for example, the vortex that I talk about, if you have one fermion occupy the state, it sort of occupy it. It can only squeeze half of a fermion. So for example, this P way that I talk about, this can only squeeze half of a fermion. So they are very strange object. And uh, this can arrive from a physical model. This is constructed by a famous physicist, Alexei Kitayev. He has a fermionic chain and it looks like a, a fermion is hopping. So C dagger is is creating a fermion SI X and annihilating one from X plus one. And C dagger, sorry, C, CC are sort of pairing. This is like a pairing, Cooper pairing that we talked about earlier. Okay. So uh, if you simply just apply the mathematics here, by replacing the C's using the gammas, you'll find that there's gamma BX is sort of coupled to the gamma AX plus one. So sort of the physics looks like the picture here, the gamma B is coupled to gamma A. So remember this oval shape is one physical site, physical fermion site. But if you look at the resultant uh, formula, it looks like the B part of that side is coupled to the A part of the next side, right? So they couple N all the way to the end. So there are two dangling one, dangling one gamma A1 and gamma B N, they are sort of free. So these are used as uh, the Mariana fermion, and there have been proposal to use these for quantum computation. So they can be can be used to encode a qubit quantum bit. Okay. So you may not. Uh, know exactly what I'm talking about because you have not arrived yourself. So the there's all, one homework exercise is for you to go through this and to show that this is indeed the picture. So this is a very simple exercise, but sort of the understanding is tremendous. So from a usual fermion system, if you have pairing, so these are pairing, and these are just the usual hopping. So one electron hop from one side to the next side. You can amazingly get these uh, Mirana states, okay? But you go to the exercise yourself. Uh, so there are a few physical systems that you can get these Mirana fermion. We talk about the P wave, but there are also people using the S wave superconductor, just like the so-called BCS S-way superconductor is SC is superconductor. S-way. And uh, put on top of the so-called topological insulator. And 
a vortex there would encode a Mariana fermion, very similar to the P wave. And you could also put a semiconductor nanowire on top of the S wave superconductor and you apply a transverse magnetic field, you could at the end, you have these uh, Mariana states, like the, the end of Kitab chain. And so at the end of these, this chain, you have two Mariana modes. There are also other, other design. Let's make it bigger. You could also use uh, a superconductor, but it's in the, in the ring shape. And you sandwich this with a semiconductor and you put a, a magnetic insulator. There's a magnetic field there that go through that. In some sense is mimicking uh, the vortex. And you will also have a Mirana fermion. But uh, these are still heavily investigated uh, experimentally. And there are also other systems using magnet, so ferro, ferro magnet, and put on top of superconductor, like putting the beads on top and align in a line. And at the end, it will also be a uh, Mariana states. Okay. These are the possible physical system, but how do you do the braiding? So one particular way to do the braiding is described in this paper. So imagine you have these uh, K-tire uh, chain. And what you do is to break that, if you have a sort of T-junction, in order to break these two, I can shuffle the one Mirana fermion to the end of this, this junction here. And I then move two over and then that one go to the right side. This is for if you have only a pair of uh, that. If you have two pair, you can do similar operation. So that would allow you to do the braiding. And this can give right to limited quantum gates. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, so well, let me comment why do we want to use topological qubit? Uh, the reason is because using these topological object is robust against noise. So meaning that we don't need to use active error corrections. And there are a lot of mathematical uh, theorems and uh, machinery behind that, uh, like fusion, and how you do the fusion and you sort of do the braiding, etc. So, but we were not going into the detail in, in this course. And gates will be implementing by braiding anion. So as shown in, in this picture here. So these representing sort of anion. And if you can do the braiding and that would give rise to quantum gates. But this is only schematic. But as I said here, it's very challenging still to just realize the qubit. But there are a lot of effort, so including uh, academia industry, such as I, uh, Microsoft and other companies. So there's no noise at all? Why is that? Uh, if you're ideal anion, oh, okay. but uh, there will always be some some noise uh, that you have to deal with. But if you really live in within that such space, uh -huh. then there's, yeah, the braiding will be exact. I see. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Okay, so maybe this is the time. Uh, let me see, there, are there questions? Uh, Frustration, yeah, frustration means, uh, yeah. If you have spin, uh, for example, antiferromagnetic, uh, yeah, there's one question about frustration. 
So frustration usually means if I have anti ferromagnetic uh, interaction, I like these two to be anti-aligned, but then the third one cannot. So this is the frustration. Okay. Uh, there's another question. When the Hamiltonian is the sum of local Hamiltonian, the ground state minimize the Hamiltonian. Okay, that this is the this is the frustration in magnetism. Other uh, frustration concept come from the Hamiltonian. It's related but not identical. So if you have a Hamiltonian, you write in terms of these. So if the ground state psi is such that each turn has the lowest possible energy. Then this is called frustration free. Okay. These are slightly different concepts. Okay. Let me do the poll. You can see the question here, but I want to bring the poll from, from the Zoom. And I'll give you one minute to do the poll. So I talk about many implementation of qubit. So for example, superconducting qubit, trap ion, trap neutral atoms, MV centers, quantum dot, or dot phosphorus in silicon, topological qubit, photonic ones, which one do you think you would spend money on? Okay. Let's take uh, maybe five more seconds. I see 75% already answered the poll. Okay, let me end the polling and share results. And let me copy this. Copy this so I have this I can save. Okay, I'll stop share results. Okay. Okay, so I want to copy this, so it's, we got it here. Okay, any questions? So let's get back to the results uh, after my PowerPoint get back, okay. Okay, so yeah, here is the results. So yeah, it's interesting to see that the topological qubit have uh, more values than the superconducting qubit one, but they are, uh, they might be promising if there's uh, any breakthrough in the technology. So the most leading one at the moment are superconducting qubit and trap ions. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to predict what, what would be the ultimate quantum computer. Okay, so these are some of the existing ones. These mostly are 
built using superconductors, namely uh, using the Josephson junction as the main uh, electronic element device in the in the device setup. So this is the only non-superconducting one that I included here. It's using ions. Yeah, and they have 160 qubits. Uh, it's more than what other superconducting system have, uh, except, except this one, 2000. Uh, this is a very noisy system. Much noisy. Okay. So let me end uh, this part by saying that uh, even though we may not have a real uh, quantum computer in practice that can be used to really solve uh, factoring or something large, but you can use this to do so-called quantum simulations. So for example, uh, the group of Chris Monroe and Maryland, they use uh, 10 Etervian ions. Uh, I talked about this, I mentioned this uh, ions before. They use this to simulate a discrete time crystal. So they were able to control the system very well. So they can have a uh, Hamiltonian evolve in uh, duration of T, T1, and then a second Hamiltonian turn on and a third different turn on. And then repeat this and see the response of their ions. And they found that the response time sort of lag in a way that actually is slower, two times slower than the period of applying the Hamiltonian. So this is what's called time crystal, discrete time crystal. Uh, I talk about the MV centers in diamond. This is in the group, uh, Michelle Lukin in Harvard. They use, uh, I don't know how many MV centers, uh, but they know the concentration is 45 ppm. They also were able to do something similar to control the Hamiltonian in a few sequence. And they repeat that. They also see the response, uh, response time is doubled. So before we have a real quantum computer, I think uh, there are already a lot of interesting applications, maybe mostly uh, in, in physics. So the next one, uh, this is one of the earlier, earliest paper proposed to use quantum computer to do quantum chemistry. For example, you want to look at the hydrogen molecule as a function of the separation and what is, how is the energy behave as a function of distance, for example, here. Okay, this is the lowest state, ground state. This is useful. Uh, if we can use quantum computer, then we can predict uh, a lot of chemical reactions. So even though we do not have a practical quantum computer to solve a large scale problem, uh, things uh, that in the quantum simulations or small problems like solving molecule may also already be useful. So that's the end of the third week topic. Any questions? Okay, if not, I'm going to switch to this week's topic. This week's topic, uh, we are going back to look at the quantum gate in more detail. And then we're going to introduce you to this KISS kit in more detail. And uh, at the end, we're going to perform uh, Grover's quantum search algorithm, okay? Yeah, so uh, I have some old slides uh, about the kids kit. Uh, I encourage you to sign up a uh, account. It's not an advertisement for IBM because uh, this is a public available system. 
and you can log in and then you will see what machine you you can use these are old your know, old old machine and you will get some token that you can use uh, in your program when you submit your job so all the job will be uh, re uh, there will be a record of the job you submit and result you can down you can download from from your account so how do you run on ibm quantum computer uh, there are two ways if you don't sign up account okay you should sign up account when you sign up account all the codes that you run will be kept track. You could use the web web interface. So that's one method. Another is to use the to install Kiskit. Uh, this is the Python based package. Okay, so in more detail, the quantum circuit using the open quantum assembly language. So, but you don't need to about how they implement that they already uh, do the packaging for you to to interface with the lower level you can use uh, ipython notebook it's like mathematica similar to mathematica you would be able to run the program step by step and they already have uh, applications for example chemistry uh, artificial intelligence optimization so Uh, this is the web interface. If you log in, you simply drag the gate here and here, and then you will be able to just run the circuit. So you just click run, and they will go through the circuit, read the instruction, and then run on their quantum computer. And they will show the mach machines uh, physical property. We talk about T1 time, T2 time, they will list here for each of the qubits, the gate error, readout error, etc. Yeah, in addition to the web base, you could also use, you can install the Kiskit package in Python. Um, yeah, so you it requires Python 3. And uh, you can you can go to the website to download the Python, and then you can install the packages. So I would uh, direct you to the documentation of the kiss kits. Let me see if I can click and go to that. I might need to change the sharing screen. When you click that, it goes to here, so you will see how you how uh, the the information about the Kiskit package, etc. Depending on what what's your favorite uh, way of Python, you could, for example, they recommend using Anaconda, etc. If you have Mac, you uh, you probably already have Python, or if you could use uh, Linux or you use Windows. Uh, so I will let you guys explore uh, how you set up this system. Any questions? How many people have experience in running Python? Uh, maybe use a hand raising function. Okay, I should design a poll, but I see roughly uh, one third of people that knows how to use Python or install Python. Uh, another simple way that I found recently is you don't, if you have access uh, to online software, you can actually run it directly without installing anything. So this is called Code Calc. Uh, it's this website. Let me see if I could show you. If you go to the website, what you would see. Uh, 
is basically this page. So you will, you will go to this. Again, I'm not associated with any of these company, but I just find the tool uh, being useful. Um, so for example, you can go to this white side and you say run code cap. Okay, and then it's going to load. When it loads, uh, I think uh, you can, there's, it's a different web page that I, okay, because I might have already logged in. Uh, you need to choose the Python 3. So I have actually record that on my slides. And so this is what you do. So if you go to the website, what you will see is this, then you say click, you click run code count now. And what you find the next page will be this, it would ask you to select a kernel. You can select Python 3. Okay, and then Python 3, then it should give you a, like a welcome page. Okay, and then you can basically copy the code my code, so you could actually upload the code. So my code you can download in from the link in the Blackboard or my website, course website. You just copy and paste or upload. You can run the program on that. So amazingly that they have these uh, KISIC package that are installed. Okay. Any questions? So maybe I go back to the web page. So this is Did you see the web page? because I don't see the web page myself. It could be that I'm in the PowerPoint presentation. So let me I, exit I, the I presentation. The... Okay. Yes. You see this? Yeah. Yes. You um, could... By the way, uh, yes. did you install it the first time you use CoCalc? Because I just checked and they don't have Qiskit. They don't have Qiskit? Uh, yeah, I just... Um, say import and then they do have oh, that. I see. I see. Um, you have to import, they don't, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I tried to import, but they say there's no module named Qiskit, so I, I don't know, maybe I have to register it then. Uh, okay, so I did th run that once. Uh, so let me run this code again to see what it, So you, you're seeing my uh, website, uh, the website that I'm opening yeah. now? Yeah. Okay. Oh, interesting, it runs. I so, said um, Python kernel. Oh, you yeah. have to, you have, yeah. You have to select Python 3 kernel. Did you yeah, select the Python? I, yeah, I, I selected that. Um, maybe maybe I have to register. Um, yeah, I'll I, figure that out. Thanks. In the beginning, I did not register, mm -hmm. and then was able to run this, and I found that uh, interestingly, I did not have to install Qiskit, and then I then register for an account. So I mean, you can try whatever way you you feel comfortable. Like you could mm -hmm. install. Kiskit and your Python locally, or you could try this. Uh, it worked on my end. So yeah, so you can try and see if uh, if it worked or does not work, let me know. So we can find a way that uh, if any of you uh, make it work, then others should be able to make it work. Sure. But my suggestion is you, if you can spend some time install Python on your 
Windows or if you use Linux or Mac, it's it's really convenient. You don't need to connect to internet uh, after you install everything. Okay. Yeah, so it worked for me. Uh, this is my account, so I still remember mine. But this is one that I use a different browser to open. So let me say new, see if there's anything. Uh, Jupyter Notebook. And I select a kernel. So this is really start from scratch. I don't have anything. And then I could try to copy the code that I have from this here to see if it works. Uh, oh, maybe you're not seeing the other screen. So the other screen, let me, did you see this screen that has no code at all? You can see yes. it. Okay, so I copy and paste from the other one. I'm using two different browsers. So this is using, uh, I'm using Chrome on this one. And if there's no error, that means it can run. So you can, and this one, I I did not register. So if it worked, then you should be able to work. So can you try that again, Yushin? Sure, I'll do yeah. that right now. Because there's no error message. So can we copy a, a, a second code? There's a second. So I define function. It doesn't matter at this point what uh, the detail of the code, you just want to make sure that you can, you can run. Uh, I still get no module name as a kit. Oh, that's very weird. So this is an un, un sign up account, right? So I'm using, I just connect to that has nothing to do with what the other browser that I open. So I find that I could, I could do this. Uh, is anyone following this? Ivan, are you trying to? Yeah, I am able to run it. You able oh, to run? Uh, uh, you don't select a Python 3 on account that you select Python 3 system. Just wide. Python 3. Yeah, the, there are two Python 3s, so you don't select Anaconda, you select Python 3 system-wide. Yeah, I did not select Anaconda. Yeah, uh, so, sorry about that. Mm. Okay, so okay. does it work? Uh, yeah, it works now. Okay, so this uh, system is really the most straightforward way to be able to run the code. Okay, but you need to have access when you are doing that to internet. Okay. So at the moment, I'm I'm not using I'm not designing any homework for that now. But maybe in the future, if all of you can run on any of the platform, then we can design some homework for you to do some exercise. So let me get back to the, the slides. Okay, so. Yeah, so call count is a useful way to run these kids kit codes, uh, Jupiter's. And yeah, so you select, this is what I did. I select Python 3 system wide. And you, you just saw that uh, I could run on that platform. Okay, so I want to see if you have any questions. Go we're near the end of the lecture. And it's free. This is free. Uh, although they sort of urge you to sign up and pay some monthly fee. But I think uh, just a free account would, would be sufficient. Okay, and once you have a way to run the Jupyter Notebook, you can you can download what I have before that I showed earlier. 
you can download and try that. Yeah, we use both if any of you uh, can try now and to see if you can run program. Just say from Qiskit import star. And if does not complain, that means you you can run the program. So this program is uh, the demo. Uh, is that the code you are talking about? Uh, this this one I never I never talk about this code. So I can run the Jupyter notebook uh, from thirty uh, first of August. Yeah, that's okay. I'm able to do it. Yeah, it's uh, the one with a lot of uh, blocks of fears, right? Yes, I am able okay. to run it up to the level of account because uh, I didn't insert. Oh my yeah. Yeah, so if you do not have a cow, then you won't be able to run on real machine, but you could run on simulator. Yeah, I am able to run it till that stage. Okay, okay, good. Yeah, so if you have, uh, uh, if you are able to log to that uh, website, please try it now. So probably we will not introduce uh, any new topic. So you go to this, is it called Cal? Okay, the, the typo here, it's called Cal, C-A-L-C. C-A-L-C. Okay, and then you select Python 3, then it would open a Jupyter Notebook. You can type anything here. You can just even import uh, maybe other functions. Yeah, here I import Qiskit and visualization, etc. But you could also download my uh, previous Notebook on August 31st. Yeah, which you can download from from the website or from the from the Blackboard. You are not a registered student. Okay. Any questions? Okay, if not, uh, let's end the lecture here. And uh, if you have question, you can, you can stay and, and then ask. I will stay for maybe five more minutes. If you, if you are happening to try this, uh, let me know. But first I stop the recording. Let's see, recording, I stop recording and I'll see you guys next time.